everybody. Welcome back to the Linux Guy. Today I'm going to talk about how I set up my GNOME desktop. I've made a few videos already and I'm using GNOME. I'm a big fan of GNOME. But I'm not a big fan of GNOME right out of the box, so I'm going to show you some tips and tweaks so you can make GNOME exactly how you like it. And I'll show you how I like it. This is a fresh GNOME desktop. and I'm just going to go ahead and start from the very beginning. So I'm going through here. I'm in the United States. I don't want location on, so I turn that off. I do have online services, including Nextcloud, but I actually use the Nextcloud client instead of the integration. You can use this though, it's a pretty cool thing. And there we go, we're in Pop! OS now. And you see here's all the basic stuff. I do have all of my software installed already, this is just a new desktop environment. I want to make it look like this. So in order to do that, I'm going to make several changes. So the first thing I need to do is I need to make sure to install the GNOME tweak tool, and you can get that on Pop! OS with sudo apt install GNOME tweak tool. And it's going to tell me I already have it installed, but that's what you do. Um, you type Y and hit enter to install it, and you see there it is. We'll come back to that in a minute though, I'm not quite ready to use it yet. The other thing we need is we need the ability to install extensions, and for this we're going to use Firefox. You can use Firefox or a Chromium based web browser just as long as the extensions work. So if you don't want to use Firefox and you have some opposition to Firefox, you can use other stuff. The important thing is, is that you'd be able to get this extension. So I'm going to go into here to add-ons, extensions, and search GNOME. And you see there's this GNOME shell integration. And by the way, I know it's supposed to be called GNOME. I think that's stupid, so I'm just going to call it GNOME. All right, so you want to add this to Firefox, and this is important, we need this extension. I haven't found it conflict with many other extensions either, which is Nice. And now I'm going to search from the top for DuckDuckDo, and there's a few extensions I want, but I'll just search for GNOME extensions so that you can see the main web page. It's extensions.gnome.org. So I'll go there, and they have just all sorts of stuff that you can get for all sorts of different purposes. I don't use a ton of them, and Pop! OS actually comes with several of its own too, so I don't want to add too many, but there are a few that I want. One that you may have heard of before because it's probably the most popular of these, that's Dash to Doc. So I'll go ahead and open that in a new tab there. And the other one I'm going to get is called Activities Configurator. And I'll open that in a new tab as well. And the big reason you want that extension installed is if you come here without it installed, you won't see this little switch here. So they have an integration with this browser, so you can just click on it will install it and there you can see that the extension is running now. Similarly with Activities Configurator I'll go ahead and do the same thing and now you'll see a little smiley face up in the corner and this thing pop up. The first time this pops up and you click close you'll pre probably freak out because it doesn't work. What you want to do is just go click the smiley face and then click close and it'll close. Uh, it took me forever to figure that out actually. It's just a weird little thing that doesn't want to close properly but it does that way. Alright so we have the extensions that I need, and you're probably starting to see that it actually looks a lot like what I wanted to, to get to. The next thing I want to do now is actually open that tweak program. So I'll go ahead and do that. So you can actually change themes here. I used to always use Numix icons, so I would install that icon pack too, but pop icons are actually pretty nice, so I decided to keep the defaults there. And same with the overall theme, I use the pop dark theme. The light theme looks nice as well. You can change that here, you can also change that in the regular settings. But we need this to make a few more tweaks than normal. So here's where our extensions are. We're going to tweak those two, but I'm going to skip past them here to show you these other features. You can change fonts if you want. You can make special bindings for your keyboard. You can set startup applications. You can do special things with the top bar. If you're on a laptop, this one's particularly nice, the battery percentage. Uh, the rest of them I don't find useful, but you might. This one under window title bars is probably the biggest one for me because I check both of these so I can have a minimize and a maximize button. Some people don't need them, and I guess I really don't either, but I just like them there. I use the minimize button quite a lot. Windows, again, there's some things you can tweak with these to change their behavior. I like the default behaviors for these. Workspaces. So if you go up here, you'll see I have multiple workspaces. There's OBS running to record this video with, and it automatically adds new ones as you drag Windows down here. I actually don't like that. I do the fix workspaces like this and I just set six. Now if I go back to this menu you'll see there's six of them and I can just drag directly to them. So let's go back to our extensions now and let's do a few things to these. Let's start with activities configurator. The first thing I want to do is change this smiley guy. He's 
fine, but I don't want to look at that every time I get on my computer. I've got downloaded a file called pop.png, and that's what I'm going to use. However, I'd kind of like this to be available to all users, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to open a terminal, and I'm going to do sudo cp, which is to copy, and I'll go into my downloads, and I'll do pop, and then I'm going to go to the root directory, usr for user share icons, and I'm going to put it in here as pop2.png, because I actually already have this file there, and I don't want to overwrite the original one, but I'll go ahead and write pop2.png so that we have this file there. It'll ask for a password, and now this is the default directory for icons for all users. So now all users have read access to this file, and I can go ahead and delete this now. The nice thing about that is if I want to go ahead and set this up on multiple users, or if I want another user to set it up, they have access to that icon, and they can have the desktop look exactly the same. So now if I go to select, I'll go to other locations, computer, user, share, scroll down to icons, you can see pop and pop2. I'm just going to use pop because I'll end up deleting pop2 after this. But there we go. I'll open it, and now you see the pop OS icon up there. The next thing I want to do is I want to change the look and feel of this top bar. You see I can change the opacity. I'm going to go and set it to 75% opacity. I like the look and feel of that. I usually use a darker background so that the letters pop, but then you can see this pretty well. You can make it auto hide, but I don't like that. I always like it to be transparent, but all those settings are in here. So you can change all the top bar settings like that all in here. You can even change the color. So I'll close that now, and now I'm going to configure this dock. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put it on the bottom. And this is sort of Mac-like. I like this workflow, so this is why I do it. You can put it wherever you want, though. You can even make it hide so that it comes up on a mouse over. You can do all sorts of stuff with it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disable Intelligent Auto Hide. So I'm going to double-click this. You can see it maximizes, and I can still see my dock. Without that, the behavior is to hide the dock, and I don't like that. And again, I want to change the appearance, so we'll go ahead and give it a solid color. Black, just like the top, and we want it to be a fixed color. We'll change it to 25% because the opacity counter is the opposite of activities configurator. So this one's 75, this one's 25. By doing that, they're actually the same, which is what I want. I want them to look uniform and themed together. The other thing I think I'm going to do is you can see all these mounted volumes here. I don't really like to see them, so you can turn those off right here. You also have a trash can. I don't really like that either, so I'll turn that off as well. But you can turn them on or off here, and if you're not running Pop! OS but you have the tweak tool installed, you can still use these. These will be in the dash to dock extension. All right, so there we are. You see I've got several that also came with Pop! OS desktop icons, which I could configure to say show my home folder on the desktop. There it is, Linux guy. I could also put files on here and shortcuts here and things to make my desktop usable. The default GNOME desktop doesn't actually let you do much with the desktop. It, it's just a background. Pop! OS has made it more user friendly and I like that. So finally I'm going to choose a background and I'm just going to choose a default one for Pop! OS here. Let's go with that. That looks pretty cool. You see how the nice dark color sort of works well with the lighter transparency and you can see this stuff real well. Now you can see this is a nice sleek desktop. It's functional. It's easy to use. One last thing to note, I've got a lot of programs on here and I'm on Pop! OS 20.04 which is based on Ubuntu 20.04. believe this feature is on both of them. You can now start to combine stuff. So like I wanted to combine Audacity and Blender into a folder. I could do that. There was my folder, so I can even go in here and I can name it. And now I can drag everything content creation in there. I've got these Commodore 64 emulators. I could throw all those in a folder together to make this organized. And I usually do do this, and I actually organize it down so that there's not all of these, but in fact one. But I can see everything by clicking my Show Applications button in one screen. I'm going to go ahead and do all my applications this way, but I recommend doing it at some point you'll be much more organized, it'll be easier to use the show applications menu more effectively. As always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe at the bottom. If you're on LBRY, send us a tip, and we'll see you in the next one.